Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to St. Mark's. Our opening hymn is number 576 in the Breaking Bread. If you all could please rise as we begin our Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. As we draw closer to the end of ordinary time, as next weekend is Christ the King, and then guess what? We start the Advent season together. As we enter into our sacred mysteries, on this weekend, as we celebrate our Lord's resurrection, we acknowledge our sins, and we ask for the Lord's mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In those days, I, Daniel, heard this word of the Lord. At that time, there shall arise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people. It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress, 
since nations began until that time. At that time, your people shall escape, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live for other, forever. Others shall be an ever, everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly, like the splendor of the firmament. And those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every priest stands daily at his ministry, offering frequently those same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But this one offered one sacrifice for sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has made perfect forever those who are being consecrated. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer offering for sin. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days after the, that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. 
and then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, for the end of the earth to the end of the sky. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches become tender and sprouts leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the gates. Amen. I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all of these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But on that day, but of that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. And we hear a very uplifting gospel reading this evening as community. As as we enter the end of our liturgical year together, the readings get very apocalyptic. The world ending, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Now, all the wise people in the world will say that there's two sure things in life, death and taxes. So we're talking about death today. Over the last few weeks, we've had many funerals at at our parish, and um, Obviously, during All Souls Day, we, uh, we pray for all of those from our parish community who have passed away in the past year. And at funerals, I always get fascinated by the families of the deceased. First of all, if you have a deceased uh, member of the family who was a very devout Catholic, I love to look at the rest of the family and the kids and how the death affects the rest of the family. And often you get that the kids all really get it and they're all, you can tell that they're all practicing Catholics as well. Sometimes the deceased is very devout and then all the kids, including extended relatives, haven't stepped in the church for 20 years. And then sometimes you get a mix. And occasionally you'll get where you see a family member really feel emotional during the liturgy because I think something snaps and realizing the faith that their parent had, and realizing that, you know, i got to get my act together. And then what they experience in this church through the liturgy, through the readings, through the music, kind of brings them out of this world into the, to actually experiencing the divine and realizing why the faith meant so much to their loved one. And so often enough, they start breaking down. You just pray and hope that at that very moment, they make a commitment to God that they're going to come back and that they realize that that life here is not all about the stuff, it's about union with him at the end of our lives and how important that is. And so often it takes an invitation because yes, at funerals and weddings there are many people that haven't stepped in, in our church for a while and we as community always need to be welcoming and we need to understand how beautiful our liturgy is. How often at the end of funerals do I have somebody that has come up to me and says, Father, I haven't been in a church for 20 or 30 years but this is the most beautiful thing I've experienced. And I love to hear that because good, because this is supposed to be where heaven meets earth. When you step in this church in liturgy, everything that happens here, you're not going to experience anywhere else. But it takes an invitation from us sometimes to get people through the doors and experience exactly what goes on here. Hearing the word of God which does not pass away. Now in a few short weeks, like I said, the Advent season is going to be starting. And the Advent season and the Christmas season, we see a lot of people that we might not have seen in a long time. And it always irks me when priests think they're funny on Christmas Day and says, oh, all of you in the pews, you know we're here every single week. You know, guilting the people into like, they're ne- and once that happens, I'm sorry, the people are never going to come back. We need to be with open arms, uh, welcome them, ex- again, focus on our liturgy and welcome them to exactly what we do here, celebrating the birth of our Lord and our Savior. But then also just the little things, you know. Now, Barbara and and Dennis, you always sit there, but if somebody is sitting in your seats on Christmas Day, you're going to go up to them and say, hey, you need to to move. (laughs) No, we, we, (laughs) everything we do as a community, we make them feel, a plaque with your names, yes, yes. (laughs) and say if they donate a certain amount of money, they too can have a plaque with their names. (laughs) No, but we have to understand that liturgy in our parish community can touch so many people to realize what life is all about because we know that we we don't know the day nor the hour. And God can come for us at any time to, to come for us and hopefully we're ready. And it's our job to make sure 
our parish community, which includes those that don't come here regularly, are indeed prepared. And that takes our warm and welcome, our various self, the hospitality that we give as a parish, but also the various ministries that we have as lectors, as the choir. We draw people into this divine liturgy, again, where heaven meets earth. And I hope we don't take what we have here for granted, because what we do here each and every week is very special. It's not mundane. It should never just be just routine for all of us. What we do here each and every week is indeed us meeting the divine. May we invite people in as this, as this Advent and Christmas season come to experience their Lord and their God. And we stand together as one family in faith and we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He is seated in heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And in trust and confidence, we bring our prayers and petitions to our loving Father. For the church, may she continue to grow through love and faithful example to the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For national and local leaders, may the Holy Spirit inspire them to govern with wisdom and justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For families who suffer discord, may God's mercy work in and through them to bring about healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For this family of believers, may the Lord continue to bless our efforts in building the kingdom of God on earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, And we pray for all who have died, especially for Michael DeCola, who is buried from this church this week, and also for Donna Warner, for whom this Mass is offered. That they and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace for eternal life. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for all the prayers on our prayer line and for those that we voice in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, We ask all of these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 422.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Mark and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church here on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all of the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, and as we have our choir this evening, we will sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion hymn this evening is number 312.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth and charity through Jesus Christ our Lord. And this weekend again, we have the 40th anniversary Christmas ornaments for uh, St. Mark's. The orders have been coming in. Hopefully we're going to start distributing them by next weekend and the weekend after. If you haven't placed your order yet, the forms are in the back by the welcome desk. Again, 20 bucks um, helping us with the project downstairs. In terms of the project downstairs, I'm gr very grateful to say that it is going to happen. Uh, based on the Celtics, uh, the Celtics tickets that we raffled off, the Christmas ornaments, and then some pretty hefty anonymous uh, donations that have happened in the last couple of weeks. We are like that close to making all the, all the flooring in all the classrooms, the, the former lounge, the bathrooms, redoing the bathrooms with new vanities and sinks, and also painting everything. I'm all in that project, and it is going to happen. So thank you so much. But if you want to, yeah, it's, so it's awesome. So, that, that, is a, that is quite a big project at the end of the day, but um, just thank you to the generous donors and also everybody who's going to be having the ornaments on your tree this year. If you'd like to contribute just to that project, you just put an envelope that just says flooring on it, and that will go to that project, or of course, like I said, the ornaments too. Uh, but again, thank you for making that happen. Secondly, the Christmas basket program, uh, which we do each and every year. Um, we are doing it this year as well, helping local families in the area during Christmas uh, with gifts and with food. Uh, instead of in the entryway where it has been in the past, all the angels are downstairs after Mass. So please come downstairs. They're all set up on tables so you can be a little bit socially distant and, all, and then pick it up and the instructions are there of when to get them back and, and how to give them back. So please come downstairs after Mass. Check out the angels. They're going to be available for the next couple of weeks and also online uh, for people that are homebound uh, watching the live stream um, on a Sign Up Genius as well uh, for the angels for our Christmas basket program. And thank you in advance for your participation. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 427. We'll sing verses 1 and 3. Thank <laughs> you.